Hey, hey, welcome to another edition of Between Two Beats. With me again is Ariel. Say hi, Ariel. Hello, Rob. How are you today? Not bad. And we're doing a, a few things differently this time. We've actually incorporated the Twitch Cricket chat window uh, directly into our broadcast. So keep it clean. Uh, keep it friendly. Uh, we have it set up to followers only. So you have to be a Twitch Cricket uh, to be part uh, of the chat. Uh, but it should show up basically right below me if you're watching the video version of this. Uh, and we'll play with the layout, obviously, as we get better with this. But we are still in the very early stages of, uh, of being ready for prime time. But the difference is, is we actually believe that we are now ready for prime time. And that's, that's a huge accomplishment. And I got to thank uh, Ariel for that. Thank you, Ariel. You're welcome. There you go. So, <laughs> some, sometimes it, it needs just that little bit of extra daily effort to get to a point where you're happy with the end result. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing purely on SEO uh, or search, depending on how you want to verbalize that. Um, and uh, through the conversation, I think you're going to realize that it's not always been search. So, you know, SEO in a roundabout way it sounds, st stands for search engine optimization. And that really just means algorithm optimization. So you're basically trying to figure out how the system, the platform measures its metrics. Okay. And then how those metrics influence behavior. So SEO obviously targets the search engines and that's your Google and your Microsoft in this day and age. There's really only two engines that are behind the scenes. YouTube, if you want to include that into the mix, but that's also owned by Google, right? So I'm going to turn it over to Ariel to formally ask the question and start the podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Um, I'm here today with Rob. I got a few questions for our digital AMA for Poptics TV. So as Rob had mentioned that today is conversation on SEO. It is the buzzword today. Now everything being digital, everything being online. And we spoke briefly before about how 10 years ago, not everyone even knew what it was. It wasn't really on people's radar. Um, so I guess the first question I wanted to start off with was where did it come from? Take me back to what people used to do and the tricks maybe that people used to do back in the day that would fool Google that maybe you wouldn't get away with today. Okay. So let's me let me let's go back before Google first, just to really give you a context. So when websites first got created, the only way what, that what year what year is this, Rob? Well this would be uh, let's put a date on this. Uh, 1994 time frame. Okay, so I'm going to use that one as an example where a lot of the commercial growth started with websites. You started seeing bands have websites. You know, you started seeing the governor general, you, the, the queen, you know, stuff like that starting to develop online presence. And that was the niche, right? That was the outlet. Uh, that was the social uh, back in the day, right? Outside of BB, uh, BBS forums, right? God, I'm dating myself here. But my point being, uh, the only way that you would access that site is if you knew the URL. And back then, the URL may have been the domain, which is what we now know as being braggle.com, as an example, or poptics.tv. But in, back then, it might have been more complex because they couldn't afford their own website. So it might have been a geocities.com slash uh, Arizona slash Megadeth because it was located in Arizona. And that's how Geocities set it up or something like that, right? So you needed to navigate listings before. And the listings were manually curated, meaning you had a site, you went to all of the listing sites and you submitted yourself no different than a podcast these days, right? And then all of a sudden people started getting into batching that and selling that service to be able to say, I will get you listed into all of the listings at the push of a button because I built a piece of software that will automate that. And once again, we have that now with Anchor FM, which is owned by Spotify, feeding all of this to all of the podcasts, and I don't have to worry about submitting this to Google, right? So that model is always there, right? You need to be able to do a lot of work. You find a way to automate that work. You then sell that automation to someone else to say, hey, come on to this beautiful new thing and we've got it easy for you because let's be honest, it needs to become an appliance before the masses can use it. And most of tech takes a decade plus 
to become appliances. And what I mean by that is my MacBook is an appliance. I've never opened it up. I have no plans on opening it up. Every single other piece of computer that I've had in my house has been torn apart, rejigged, modified the whole list. It became an appliance. It powers on, it powers off, it does its job. It's perfect. You know what I mean? And you don't need to understand the operating system. You don't need to understand Unix. You're not doing Unix commands on your Mac. You know what I mean? So that context applies to the website. So you got yourself listed literally on a listing site, right? And once you got yourself there, people would navigate the listing site. So Yahoo back in the day was the Google because they had the ultimate list and other people came around, but it was always, how can I get on that list? What, how do I make myself the number one? So if you use yellow pages, I am AAA Automotive or SEO. I am Brantford Plumber. Okay. Those are the same tricks that applied back in the yellow pages days and still apply now to the yellow pages of the internet, which is SEO. Okay. The commercial side of white pages, right? So white pages, let's say being the academic original aspect of what the web was supposed to be. Okay. But at the end of the day, around 1990 ish timeframe, Google started emerging. I might've been a bit later than that, but timeframe wise, mid, mid nineties, uh, bots were starting to be created to crawl the internet. Okay. And there was a lot of bots. There was all this stuff. I remember correctly. And I'm really dating myself here, but it was all about how do I get myself discovered by these bots? Because these bots will then crawl my site. And instead of me submitting a thousand pages to, to the thing, it's coming around and going, Hey, I found this. And it all became interlinking pages, right? If I can create a link between this page to this page, the bot will navigate. And you started finding sites being built more for the navigation of the bots than the human species that were coming to the site, right? And that's where the bad SEO sites versus the good SEO sites are really differentiating, right? But at the end of the day, it was no different than on the listing days. How do I become number one in automotive in that category when I've got three people? Well, that's easy. You're all on the same fucking page. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't swear. You're all on the same friggin' page, right? Uh, I don't have this marked explicit, so I do have to catch myself. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you're not listed, that's your first step. And that is still Google to this day. That is still web to this day. If you don't have a website, well, you're not on the internet. If you're not indexed, you can have a website. If you're not indexed, you don't have a website in the eyes of Google in the world, right? So if you have a thousand pages and only one of those pages is indexed, none of your content is being found because no one's browsing your site. Right back then, we used to surf the web. The term surf the web, you know, meant we were just spending hours and hours and clicking through and, and going into, you know, links that would bring us to other sites that were similar. And you were discovering, you know, through uh, website circle lists, you know, and stuff like that, which were just means of cross advertising. I follow you, you follow me. You sound familiar, doesn't it? Right? All these techniques are all about building presence building attention, building yourself up, separating yourself from others, right? So the cheesy tricks of the trade back in the yellow pages, triple A to be at the first in the alphabet has nothing to do with your business. You know what I mean? Naming yourself based on a street, you know, so that people in the area are finding you. Well, oh, geez, that sounds like geocaching, you know, your, 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 your business nowadays, right? So those tricks, never changed. Uh, you mentioned earlier putting white text on a white background. That would be all of the stuff that the bots would see and digest, but the human race would never see and be disturbed by it, right? So it was the easiest way of hiding in plain sight bad shit, <laughs> you know what I mean, for the purposes of playing the game. And I say playing the game because it's an algorithm game. Fundamentally, that's it. It's an algorithm game. So to your point, it's never really changed. The platforms have changed. And fundamentally, one of the other differences that have changed as well is the competition. There's only really two indexes out there, Microsoft's and Google's. Microsoft's is Bing, which I think feeds uh, the Indie, not the IndieGoGo, the DuckDuckGoGo or whatever. 
DuckDuckGo, I think that's the one. Uh, and then Google feeds pretty much everything else. YouTube is the number two ranked index in the world, and it's also owned by Google. So theoretically, Google owns all search. So SEO is not SEO anymore. SEO is Google optimization. That's it. it you know, it's geo, it's go. It's no longer SEO, it's go. Back in the day, there were multiple search engines. Okay, and, but what you need to understand with SEO is it doesn't just apply to your website. If you're doing work internally on an intranet or an extranet, or you're building a platform like Facebook or, or anything like that, SEO is now the search optimization. And all those systems have search functionality, right? So any place where you see a search bar, we just think Google, you know what I mean, in the context of digital, but any place you see a search bar, that's Facebook, that's Instagram, that's, that's your, your phone contact list, how do you optimize the search engine? And the search engine exists in every single device that exists out there. So what is the next search engine optimization? Alexa, Amazon, you know, Siri. How do I get my voice heard properly? Do you know how they understand Laving versus Levine versus Lavingi? You know what I mean? Try Taruka on, a, on one of these devices. How is your SEO on the device? How is the search engine for that platform optimized? We tend to think Google because that is the website niche, if you think of it that way. And it's a huge niche. But search engine optimization is any place you see a search bar. WordPress sites. How do you become the number one WordPress site on a topic? within WordPress.com. You're not searching Google's index, you're searching WordPress's index in that scenario. When you're searching on Facebook, you're not searching Google's index or the web's index, you're searching Facebook's index, and it's a private index. And they control what's external versus internal. They do not like promoting external links, right? Well, it's not in their best interest for you to leave the system. So how do you optimize this stuff like that? You don't put the link in your post. You put the link in the comment. All of a sudden, it's not, you know, your, your post is not being whacked down by the algorithms because it doesn't see the link that's external initially. You know, so those tricks exist far and wide. So those, I guess that's that's deep diving in on the, on the black hat trick. So clearly they haven't gone away the bots are getting smarter. That is definitely true. I know that back in the day, obviously you had mentioned there was the white text and mm -hmm. you had also spoke about a few of the other ones. And now the, I know they're more into natural language, but there is obviously ways to get around that. Um, but to go on from where it went, where it was, where mm -hmm. SEO was back in the day to where it is today, now, how would you elaborate on okay. that? T today is radically different in so many ways because SEO doesn't matter. Because that, oh, the fan just kicked off. There you go. I was wondering what that was. But no, yeah. it, it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I've got cats. You got fan. But uh, and once again, uh, I don't think you have the fan in the other room. Doesn't really matter. Uh, it was off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter, though. Uh, because crickets. To your point, presently, the problem is if we're thinking in the context of Google, Google's interest, much like I said earlier with Facebook, not wanting to send you outside of their site, it's not in Google's interest for you to click through to the website. It is not in their interest for them to send you traffic. It is in their best interest for you to get the answer you were looking for on the search result and never click through to the site. And that is radically what's different is your website has nothing to do with impressions anymore. You're not gonna get impressions. No one's going to your site like they did before. They're Googling and they're finding the answer on the search page. And then if they need to deep dive, they'll click through. But the click through may not necessarily be you. It may be your GMB. It may be your competitor's ad that's targeting your business. You wanna talk about Black Hat, put the name of your competitor in your ad. 
You know what I mean? Person searches for the, the competitor, you come up. Duh. You know what I mean? But there are rules that you can weave around, right? But fundamentally, those things have been around forever. You know, calling yourself uh, just slightly different than your competitor's name or having a phone number that's just slightly off or a domain that's mis and misspelt the letter. Do you know how many Google variants are out there that are not Google? You know what I mean? So the same applies to, to what we're just talking about. But fundamentally what's changed is it's no longer about search engine optimization to be able to make you number one so you get a click through. It's about search engine optimization so your content is showing up as a rank zero. And what that means is Google produced content. The stuff that shows up on the right, the stuff that shows up that shouldn't be there, the stuff that's not your website but is your website. You know what I mean? You're getting the answer but you'll never get the conversion. And it almost has become ego metrics now, right? Going back to, yeah, I'm number one, but no one's coming to my site. Well, you've kind of won and lost, right? And that's the reality of right now. Even when you win, you're gonna lose because in the world of Google, it's all about promoting the GMB. So what is SEO in the world of Google right now is GMB optimization because the GMB is the number one thing that Google's gonna pull from. Right. And for those for those yeah. who don't know what GMB is, can you explain that? Yeah. So that's your Google My Business, right? GMB, Google My Business, right there in the name Google, uh, and anything you put there, they'll use to better understand you, but also to better. Going back to my point, it is not in their best interest for you, the organic link, to get clicked. It's in their best interest for you to never leave Google, and it's in their best interest for you to click on the ad. So there's more ad space now than ever before. There's more rank zero space than ever before. And what I mean by rank zero, like I said, is you're not ranking number one. Google's ranked above you with your own content, you know, or your competitor's content. You know what I mean? You've done all the work and they just said, oh, they're slightly better or they've been there maybe a bit earlier before you or we're lazy. We really don't care about this area. We've only skimmed it once and you're stuck. And that's why you have these marketing companies that are showing up number one because Google doesn't care about the area, so it really doesn't deep dive, right? So that's the question is, I would rather optimize on the deep dive, which is that relationship, that conversion. And this goes back to, I don't need 9,000 views. I need one view with the person that will follow through on the deep dive, have a deeper conversation, and that's the 301, not the 101 crowd. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, so sorry to cut you off yeah, there. No, no, I was no, just no, gonna go for say, it. I was just trying to lead into, I guess, my final question of yep. where do you see it going? Yep. Like from here, um, where we've come so far already in the 10 years that it's kind of been around being starting back when I remember people used to stare at my dad with three heads when he would talk about SEO, like what the heck is this? Now it being everyone wants to be number one on Google. It's a buzzword everyone wants to be optimized and to beat their competitors and to be ranked um, obviously number one on the Google page for those searches related to their business. Um, and yeah, I guess, where do you see it? Where do you see it going from here? A few ways, obviously, you know, and once again, this is just my perception. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more mic micro sites. Okay. Sites that are built around the idea of niche focus, on a specific aspect of your business. And they may not necessarily exist on the domain because it may not be prohibitive or, or make sense. So some of my clients have secondary businesses that may not go well with their main brand, right? So we create these microsites and that's Braggle. Hey, there's a pitch. But fundamentally, I see more of that happening because now all of a sudden there's more of your content showing up on the search results, right? So the more that I can have of you on that main page from various sources, the less of your competitor shows up and the more it reinforces you as being the right answer, right? And what that involves is giving Google the proper information. And sadly, most sites have never been giving Google the right information. They still supply the information the old fashioned way. It's sprinkled around the site. Go look for it. The phone number's somewhere over there. Uh, the name of the business, who cares? You know what I mean? Like it's not well structured from a computer point of view, right? Much like resumes these days have to be formatted for the ATS systems, the applicant tracking systems, you know, you should have a degree of content that 
Google or whoever is, you know, using their APIs to assess your site, um, have a better, easier task of doing. And I've said this before, make it easy for Google to understand. Okay, so the optimization now is not as much about the tricks that we used to use in the old days, but is to give more context because Google's smart enough now to understand the context. We don't have to say that this is an image of a barbecue. It friggin' knows. It looks at the photo and goes, that's a barbecue. And it assesses it in real time, right? So all those tricks that we used to do to, to say what something was, Google's smarter and faster and better. So if you say it's a dog, but it's a cat, you're gonna get penalized and, and Google will know the difference between a cat and a dog, you know? So the assessment there is the, the bot that you're trying to fool is a lot smarter than your average cookie. And if you give the right information to the bot, it's too stupid to realize what you're giving it. It's in the right format, so it's gotta be good, right? So that's, that's the black arts now, right? Is talking directly to the algorithms in their language. And that's not white text on a white backdrop. That's understanding schema. That's understanding the mechanics of a platform. That's understanding what does Google want? It loves answers. Give it answers, make questions, right? FAQs, your dad knows this as much as I do. FAQs are ranking great right now. What does Google like? Products. It likes to sell things, right? More products. What doesn't it like? There is a gazillion bits of content out there that is saying the exact same thing and has been around for 30, 40 years. It does not need more of that. So all of those experts that are telling you to just create more of the same, yeah, it's gonna ignore that shit because it's got it. It's learned from it. And that's really what it comes down to. What does Google not know yet? And if you provide that information, your, your, their bots are gonna to come to you because it wants to learn because we're feeding AI. We're feeding big data, right? It's using all of our data to better itself, right? So that's the algorithm of the future. So where is it going? Voice, voice commands voice results. The problem with voice results is you're not seeing two, three, four, five results. What is the best poutine in the area? It'll tell you, but it won't tell you any other competitors. Whereas when you're doing a search, you're seeing options, right? So it's spoon feeding you. So if you're now being spoon fed and the masses like to be spoon fed, right? That's it. That's the solution. What do you need to spoon feed your audience and how do you make Google your best friend so that it listens to you? And that applies to social, that applies to search, that applies to everything. Because what is optimization? I'm important, believe that I'm important. Over here, over here, yeah, there you go. That's it, that's SEO. All right. I think that was um, an awesome answer. I really liked the point where you had talked about, um, I wrote down here, what does Google not know? That it, talking about um, where it's going, Google obviously wants to learn, constantly wants to learn. It, we've come a long way. It used to be bots that you would have to tell it consistently, like you had pointed out, what the picture was. And now it just looks at the picture and automatically knows so I thought that that was a, a really good point that you said. I just love the fact that you made notes. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do yeah, yeah. here. So yeah, what we're going to do is uh, in the event that your dad is still watching, uh, he's more than welcome to put in a question online. But if we don't hear from him in a few minutes, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to shut down. So thank you uh, all for for listening to this uh, episode of Between Two Beats. It's a pleasure for us to put this on. It gives me a chance to talk. It gives me a chance to be social. But more importantly, uh, we've always said this from day one. It allows Ariel to learn more about the workplace that she's in. And uh, through these conversations, uh, and I've already seen it in the last month, the feedback that I get uh, through that back and forth is a lot more knowledgeable. And that's half the battle, right? It is that awareness, right? And you're becoming a lot more aware of these subtleties. And from that awareness, uh, you're gonna be able to sculpt better questions and better conversations. And as you said yesterday, this is more about the art of conversation because technically speaking, there's only so much more I can do with this gear. <laughs>